So we've got a literal fire sale here in Austin, Texas. I'm Ian of Austin. If you haven't been to this channel before, please, 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 you're gonna wanna stay and listen to this. Who do we have here? LJ Sternberg with LJ Residential. I love it. So LJ and I are gonna walk through this property. As you see, this has caught on fire, but there's so much potential in this property, you're gonna wanna check it out. So we're gonna walk through, talk a little bit about the place, the neighborhood, all that sort of stuff. I hope you enjoy this tour with us. So, LG, why don't you start off by telling us a little bit about the area and why you moved to this incredible property? Well, we're in Westover Hills, which is a little bit north of Northwestern. We're encased by three of the best highways in Austin, Texas, Mopat, 183 and 360. You've got access to the entire city within 10 minutes, so I can't really name the restaurants that are close because everything's close. Well, I just had brunch at the another Broken Egg Cafe. You've got the Austin Board of Realtors. Not that I want to go there all the time, but it's right down the street here. I mean, easy access, like you said, to all the different major highways. This is an incredible location. We're sitting on a cul-de-sac here. Uh, let's let's take a look at the house because I know that's what you're really here to see. Ow. You lead the way, sir. I love that there's a balcony up top. We'll get there in a second. But remember, this house did catch on fire, so when you see inside, you have to be very imaginative on what this could have been, but that's why we're gonna talk about like how he had it set up when he lived here over the years. And the lighting's a little bit low because the power's off. Yeah, and actually, it's funny you say that because it, it translates really well on this camera. Hashtag iPhone, or shout out to iPhone, I think is what it is. So you're standing in the living room, I love that this is a chalkboard. I like the chalkboard on the wall. I like that there's fans in all in a lot of the different rooms. That's great. I love the fireplace. Look how large this thing is. I mean, hopefully that's not a sore subject, right? <laughs> oh. Forgive my corny jokes, y'all. So we can so I can see this pretty well, right? You see? Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, it works out pretty well. So tell us about the kitchen area. Looks like there's plenty of storage. Um, you had your fridge, your your ready for a quick upgrade. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Interesting. Lots of storage, your kitchen dishwasher. Area. Put some stuff under here. Oh man. It's sad that this type of thing happens, but think about think about it if you're in a position where you have the resources or we're planning to completely re well renovate a property, this is the perfect neighborhood to be able to do that and this home, I mean it, it could use a little love. So this is this is great. So what's this room? This is the downstairs guest room. Guest room, okay. Do we want to go down to where the fire happened in the garage or the last Yeah, room? let's do that before we go upstairs. We're going to go check out where the fire started. Um, one thing that's important to note is that the home is still completely structurally sound. What is this, another bathroom? What is this? So this is a office. Yeah, it's a lot larger than a bathroom. As soon as I saw it, I couldn't see anything. Okay, got it. And this used to be a wall, but we can step into Yeah, the walk right through the wall into the garage. Great. Yeah, this is the roof of the garage. And this is where the fire happened. The yeah. fire was undetermined of what happened. Yeah, this is, man, this is intense. Um, need to point out that uh, his entire family got out safe, no issues. Another raccoon family moved in right after. Uh, so they, they did a little bit here, but they're gone too now, right? This area we always call the second kitchen, which okay. is your laundry room area. Uh-huh. It's very, it's large. It's a large laundry room. Okay. Former tankless water heater. Yep. Yeah, it was tankless. That's probably a good thing that that wasn't gas. All right. Right? Let's wow. Let's go upstairs and check out where we slept at night. Yeah. So um, he was telling me that he had just replaced all the floors and the carpet like weeks before the fire took place. I'm so sorry that that happened. Brand new man. roof too. Brand new roof? Come on, all of it. 
This oh. was my daughter's room. She had her own little private bathroom. <clears throat> Oh yeah, so love that, that there's a, a private bath in here. I think that's always an excellent, I'll call it a feature, but it's always wonderful to have that. Uh, fans, closet, love having fans in all the rooms. This is, okay, so what's cool about this is, obviously it's a bedroom, but then you have a balcony that wraps around to the front. We'll go out on the other one, we don't need to fall on this one. Uh, but a balcony that wraps around, and so uh, it's just, it's nice, and you'll get to see the view. It's something to appreciate for sure. Thank you. Another guest bathroom up here. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, can be beautiful. <laughs> right now it needs a little love. <laughs> Used to be beautiful. Okay, so I'm gonna come this way and this is your media space, your media room. Right, so you, he has a projector mounted up here and then you put a couple chairs and then boom, you project it against this wall. It's good. All right, this is our primary closet for the or the closet for the primary suite, right? Correct. It's a large, large closet, I like that. So you'd walk in, you've got your own little media room. So imagine if you lived here, this is your primary wing, right? And you have your closet, you have your TV and all your stuff over there, and then you don't have to worry about um, someone, or well, how would I say this? You don't have to worry about having your uh, TV in the bedroom, not necessarily. Some people like that, some people don't. All right, another fan. Okay, so this is really, really cool. Check out the shower and this, uh, this space in here. And so what did you say? It was a sauna as well? Yes, used to be. Well, yeah, I mean, but that means it, it's set up to be one again. It's to be one. Yeah, it's ready to go. What is this? Another closet? Oh, okay, just like a large linen closet. That's right. Okay, in your restroom, plenty of leg room for your, uh, your toilet room here. All right, and this is what we were talking about earlier with the balcony. You can come out if you want. Yeah. Wide enough for two people. Yeah, this is fantastic. Look at this. And what's what's interesting is we were talking about it uh, before we started the video, and that house is actually the same house flipped compared to this one, right? That's right. That's right. So if you want all the, the juicy gossip on that, I'm just kidding, <laughs> on the, the way that house is set up and laid out. Very, very cool. It's beautiful. And we saved the best for last, the backyard. Oh yeah. Backyard is, it's phenomenal. Thank you. So while we're uh, walking toward the backyard, one of the questions I love to ask people uh, on all these different walkthroughs is, what do you think this lot and uh, home in this current condition is worth to you. If you were going to make an offer, what type of offer would you make? And then elaborate on it, right? So we know that mm, the house burned down, but the neighborhood's incredible. Uh, a lot of people would love to be in a neighborhood like this. And so if you were going to make an offer, what do you think that would be? That's kind of how real estate works, right? So we're uh, out back with, um, I just learned today that the builder called this a butterfly roof, right? Correct. Yeah, just because of the pitch. I'd never heard that term before. I mean, we see these all the time, but the fact that it was called a butterfly roof, I thought that was kind of neat. Trying to get a nice view of the size of the lot. So how large is this lot again? Well, the lot is 24 acres. Okay. Uh, almost a boat ramp over here. Mm -hmm. Had a boat and you could have an RV. Yeah, well, I, I have my RV in storage right now and our boat's at the marina because... I don't have the space to be able to put it on anything. That's so funny. And so another thing that's really, really important about this particular neighborhood and area is that the tax rate is extremely reasonable for Central Texas. What's our tax rate here? 1.8%. And so for those of you that may or may not know, the 1.8%, what it, what it, uh, the way it works is essentially an appraiser will come out and determine the value of the property and based on that, you're multiplying the value and the tax rate. And so, -hoo -hoo -hoo, I got it. You're multiplying that and the tax rate. And so it works a little bit differently than some of the other states you may have uh, purchased a home in. All right, so what did you do here? So this was all here when we purchased the property, but it's an entertainer's dream. Yeah. It's got a sport court, it's uh -huh. a basketball court, pickleball yep. court, volleyball court. Mm -hmm. uh, we put up a, a tarp here so we could actually bring that 
projector downstairs. I think that's that. I have nine movies with all the kids in the neighborhood. No, I might buy this house. No, I'm just kidding. But I would love to buy this house. This is, this is flipping awesome, seriously. So you said there, so there's storage back there for the volleyball or for the volleyball net? Yeah, yeah volleyball so volleyball net, net that you can attach to the two poles here. He had mentioned pickleball and tennis and like, it's just, it's great. And there's concrete under this. So if you wanted to take up the sub, the surface and do something else or have another use case for it, you ha it's very easy to do that. Good. Yeah. I like it. Are you going to get on the trampoline for us? I should, I should go. I should. <laughs> no, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> insurance, right? You already got your payout. No. <laughs> it's not liability insurance. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about the couple of trees. So you said there are some protected trees here. So we've got some trees that are protected because they're over 19 inches in diameter. Okay, what does a protected tree mean for those that may not know? So a protected tree in Austin, Texas is something you cannot cut down without a permit. And even if you do want to cut it down and it's over a certain size, you probably can't cut it down unless you make some reparations, which you might not want to make because it's very expensive. Yeah. Uh, I'm originally from Chicago. And I'm dating myself here, but I lived through the era of, it wasn't Michael Jordan, it was Mr. T okay. trying to cut down all of his his trees in Lake Forest, Illinois. Okay. And that was a whole stink for everybody because they were, you know, it was Lake Forest. You can't live in Lake Forest and cut all the trees down, Lake even though you own the property. Right. It makes sense. So anyway, yeah, this is, it's, it's important because a lot of people don't realize these sorts of things. They don't realize the, the rules around HOAs, the rules around taxes, the rules around uh, protection for animals uh, and species of trees, apparently, and plants. But the good part about the protected trees on this lot, they're near the corners of the lot. So there's not in the center where it's going to cause any kind of construction issues that you might want to uh, change the house or change the uh, footprint. So we use a real world example, this tree that's sitting right here, that's just off of the, um, uh, well, in the deck and just off of the basketball court. This, you could cut this down, but would you? Like, this is awesome. It provides so much shade when it's super sunny out. Like having this canopy of trees is something that so many people seek when they're looking for a property. They want that maturity in the neighborhood. Always kept the bills down because of all the canopies over the house. God, that's good. So thank you so much. Do you have anything else that you think people need to know about the property or the location? I think we've covered everything. All right. Well, thank you all so much for touring with us. We appreciate your time. And if you are serious or interested in this property, hit us up and answer some comments. Let us know what you think about the what you would guess on the price. I'm really, really curious on seeing that. Thanks so much. Bye.